Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today we'll show how you can install Unify controller in your Docker. This installation can be done in a Raspberry Pi, can be done in a computer, in a desktop that you make as a server or in a proper server. And then you're gonna ask why I want to install a Unify controller. It's simple. You know what is this? It's a Unify access point. And this Unify access point in order to configure it properly and manage it and control what's going on, it's uh, you need to have Unify controller. You have some options you can buy directly Unify controller, you can buy a Unify Dream Machine, or you can have uh, in your server and only manage those. You decide which one is better. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's do it. we're gonna install the Unify control to control this access point. And then you're gonna ask Alan why I want to control this access point and why I would like to have this Unify. It's basically, some time ago, I needed to change the laminate for my house. And when I did this change, I needed to put some uh, foil to try to insulate better between the floor and the levels, basically to insulate between the ground floor and the first floor. What I did in the first stage, I bought one of those. This one, it's a power line from Deep Link. They promise that it can allow you 1000 megabytes or one gigabyte, and you can install another place, then it will make a mesh between your house and that you have a better internet, either in the ground floor or in the first floor. What problem that I have? You have one of those that you connect in the first floor and one of those is small one that you connect together with your router. Through the power, they will transmit the signal. It's work, the frequency rate is really low. Normally I used to get around 200, 300 uh, megabps per second and it's really crap if you consider that this one could maximum 1000 megabytes. So what I did, I get through this one and pass a RJ45 cable and I connect here. Improve, yes, improve. But then I come for another problem. The problem that I have that when I'm using my phone, from the ground floor, when I go for the first floor, they didn't switch properly. So they keep connect for the hole in the ground floor. And once that connect for this one in the first floor, they didn't stop to connect either that I'm the ground floor and they didn't work so well. So sometimes I have uh, zero bar or one bar in my Wi-Fi, but I'm in the side of my router. And sometimes I'm one bar as well and I have a side of this power line, so they didn't work so well. I don't know if this happened because I have different brands of router and this access point, but this should have the problem. And that I say, I need to do some change. So what I decide, I decide to get a few of those access point and work great, much better. What I did, I disable the Wi-Fi for my router and get two of those. One of those, it's in the ground floor and one of those is in the first floor. So in this way, I could uh, do a better mesh. I configure exactly the same name of Wi-Fi, configure everything, and once that I'm here in the ground floor, they will get this one and my bar is full. When I go for the first floor, my bar is still full because they will connect automatically and they will manage in a better way. Of course, you need to do some small configuration in your controller. If you guys want, in the next video, I can show how to tweak it and what you need to look when you are configuring it. But once that you do this configuration, they work much better. But what's the problem? You need to control it. And the only way to control it is to have a controller. This one don't have a controller. They only work as an access point. So you can control it, install the application directly on your phone and configure it. But you cannot have all the metrics. You don't know how many users are there. Or you cannot do some uh, tweaks so easily as you have a proper controller. Then you come the option. You can buy a Unified Dream Machine that have a red controller add in it. You can have a controller that you can buy or you can install on your server. If you don't want to go for Unified Dream Machine, don't need to buy a controller because it will be pointless. It's only some money that you're going to spend and you not uh, get so much better for it. So in this way, I will show how you can install the Unified controller in your server and that you can manage it. So now we're going to switch for the computer and that we go for the next step. So now we are in the Docker Hub. The image that you're gonna install is Linux Server Unify Controller, has been updated four days ago, and have over 100 million people download. So let's go here in the part of architecture. As I told, they will work in uh, Raspberry Pi because they have architecture for ARM and 8664 for a computer, so it's totally fine. We go down here to access your Unify Controller, you need to access through the port 8443, that's fine. 
and now we come and we're gonna install the Docker Compose. Why? Because it's much easier and you can install directly in Portainer. If you don't like the Portainer and want to install only install, you can go to Docker Click, but uh, I'd suggest you to use the Portainer. It's easy option and you can see everything what's going on. So before we do the installation, we go through the parameters that you need to look. We have a lot of ports that we need to configure. These ports for different uh, things, for Wi-Fi guest, for mobile show points and everything. One thing that I suggest, you need to look which port that you are currently using and change it. So you will not have any conflict. If you want to change some of those, pay attention because they will look for a different place. The server that I'm gonna install, it's empty, do not have anything there. So it's totally fine, I don't need to change any port, but I suggest you to look on it. Also, you need to look for your PUID and PJD. For it's cover the PUID, PJD for your user, it's easy. You only go to SSH, put ID and the name of your user and they will show the information for you. Also, you need to configure the limits of memory, but I'm not uh, do it because 1024 is fine for me. And we need to configure a volume called slash config. So we come here in my portainer and ready create it. I already put my PUID as 1000 with my PJD as 100. Uh, I leave these uh, limits of memory exactly the same. I didn't change because I didn't need it. And uh, the volume I already create. This volume I'm create exactly my hard drive. If I come here in my open media val, because I'm using open media val, I have here my absolute path and I create inside this one a folder called Docker, inside this Docker a Unify folder. If you are using directly in the Debian, I suggest you to create in the slash MMT slash Docker, create that folder and that you can unify the way that you prefer. Or as well, you can create a volume, but as a volume, it's difficult to backup it if you need and to export the backup when they create. So it's easy to create an external hard drive only for easy manipulation. Here the ports I will leave exactly the same and the policy I will leave restart and let's stop and I can put update. Because this stock was already created, I can only update it. Now I come here in my containers and here I have my Unify controller. If I open here and come in log, there will appear all the information. For me, I already appear done. So the container should be working. What we should do, we should open the port 8443. Let's do it now. When you're gonna open the controller, don't forget to use HTTPS before you use the IP address, otherwise they will not connect. Now we come here advanced and put proceed. First time that you're gonna configure this controller, they will ask you to choose the name of controller. In my case, we'll put Sauber Lab and I put confirm with uh, terms condition and put next. Now they ask you to add your username and your password. This one, you need to access this website, unify.com, that red access here, and you need to create your account. So you come here, sync up, and you create an account. Once that it's great, we can come here back and now we can add our user. My case, my user already created. Now they offer you to make out automatic optimization for my network. I will suggest you to don't click it because it's better to configure it in the future in the way that you want. Also, they ask you to enable auto backup. Yes, this one I suggest you because in this way you have all the metrics saved and all the configuration saved if in the case that you want only to recover or move for another controller. Now we can here and put next and they say no device connected. This one we can jump because in the future we can add an aux device because my access point is out so they will not find anyway. So I can put here next. Now they ask you to create a Wi-Fi name. You can choose to skip it, but I will create, so I'll put Sauber Lab Wi-Fi and my password, I can put any password and I can choose to combine 2 GHz and 5 GHz. I suggest you do it because they will choose automatically and in the next video I'll show how you can properly configure it, but uh, you choose to leave it both together. So we come here and put next. Now they ask you to review all the information. Yes, for me it's fine. So I can put finish. They will take some minutes until they create all the configuration. Once that you have the configuration, they will go for the next page. Here it's running in uh, Windows and now you can have all the configuration here and how to configure it. Here will be all your Wi-Fi names, your network, your internet. In the next videos, I will show how you can do it better to try security and continue on. But let's go for my holder, what I read have configured, so it's easy for you to understand what you can see for this one. When you open your control, it will be basically the same, but you're not gonna have the 
threat management. The rest will be the same configuration. So here I already know that my internet, I'm using Vodafone. I have uh, my download and upload with my limits that I already got. All my use and the performance, so my iOS, it gets 74%, it's quite low, but the rest of application is going quite well. Here I can see what's the performance in the last day, last five days and last month. So in the last month I have better, I think that's uh, from now that's a little bit low. And here I can see and follow what is going on for each day and how many clients. I uh, Here I have my access points, I have two access points, my Unified Dream Machine. If I have here my map, I can see how many devices connect. Here I will jump my statistic, I can know how much traffic that I have in the last month. So I have around 402 terabytes of traffic where I use uh, Netflix, I use uh, some uh, transmission, I use uh, some Amazon and other things that is going on. And in this way, I know what is going on and I can track how much performance. Also, if I come in my configuration, I can have exactly the same screen that I have there. And I can configure it more than one Wi-Fi, I can configure it more than one guest. I can make some network, security, internet and continue on. So guys, this video was really fast, only to show how you can install the controller in your server or your Raspberry Pi. In the next video, we'll try to show how you can set up each device or more device and how to add more Wi-Fi, how to add a guest, how to do some uh, different LANs and continue on. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.